Hello, a warm welcome to you all from SDT University. Myself, Dr. Vidushi from Faculty of Dental Sciences. In the last lecture, I have covered about the mechanical plaque control aid. In today's lecture, I will be covering about chemical plaque control aids. Now coming to the chemical plaque control. The chemical plaque control is always used as an adjunct to the mechanical plaque control. Means mechanical plaque control is a primary plaque control method to control and to remove the food debris and plaque from the tooth surfaces and the gingival surfaces. So what are the ideal requisites for the anti-plaque agent? It should significantly reduce the plaque and gingivitis. Second, it should prevent growth of pathogenic bacteria. Third, it should prevent the development of the resistant bacteria. Fourth, it should be compatible with the oral tissues. Fifth, it should not stain the teeth or alter the taste. Sixth, it should exhibit the good retentive properties, that is, substantivity. And last one, it should be inexpensive and easy to use. Now starting with the mouth rinses. Of the various oral hygiene products available, Mouth rinses are very popular in many individuals who also appreciate the mouth freshening properties of many of these mouth rinses. To date, mouth rinses containing chlorhexidine remain the gold standard of anti-plaque agents. The problem of halitosis certainly is a major stigma for many individuals, although it is considered as a cosmetic nuisance. In most individuals, the microbial degradation of organic substances in the mouth resulting in the production of the volatile sulfur compounds such as hydrogen sulfide and methyl mercaptan results in the halitosis. Treatment for which consists of not only the mechanical removal of microorganism but also the use of mouth rinses and toothpaste containing various chemicals are of great help. Some of these chemicals mask the oral malodor only, whereas others produce antibacterial effect or they neutralize the volatile sulfur compounds. Now coming to the classification of chemical plaque control agents. It can be classified into first generation anti-plaque agent, second generation and third generation. The first generation of the anti-plaque agent has the potential to reduce the plaque scores only by about 20 to 50 percent because they exhibit poor retention within the mouth. For example, antibiotics, phenols, quaternary ammonium compound and sanguine. Coming to the second generation anti-plaque agent, it has a capacity to reduce the overall plaque reduction by about 70 to 90 percent because it has capacity to retain better in the oral tissue and exhibit slow release properties. For example, bisbigunides. Now coming to the third generation anti-plaque agent. They block the binding of microorganisms to the tooth and to the each other. They do not exhibit good retentive properties as to compare with the chlorhexidine. For example, delmopinol. Now coming to the antibacterial activity of the chlorhexidine. Chlorhexidine is a dicatanic bisgunide with a broad antibacterial activity. It has a wide spectrum of activity against various gram-positive bacteria, gram-negative bacteria and various viruses. It has a strong affinity to bind with the skin and mucous membrane. Chlorhexidine work at different level at different concentrations like it acts as a bacteriostatic at a low concentration and bactericidal at a very high concentration. Chlorhexidine 
Desorbed from the oral mucosa has three mechanism of plaque inhibition. First, it prevents the pellicle formation by blocking acidic group on salivary glycoprotein thereby reducing glycoprotein adsorption onto the tooth surface. Second, it prevents the adsorption of bacterial cell wall onto the tooth surface by binding to the bacteria. Third, it prevents the binding of mature plaque precipitating agglutination factor in saliva and displacing calcium from the plaque matrix. Chlorhexidin prevents plaque formation. Now let's see the optimized use of chlorhexidine. Chlorhexidine fails to distinguish between bacterial and other proteins found within the mature plaque. So, extranaceous protein must be removed professionally in order to optimize the effect of chlorhexidine. Chlorhexidine prevents plaque formation. Its mode of action does not allow it to remove the plaque completely. That is why it is recommended not to use chlorhexidine before or immediately after using toothpaste as the interaction with ionic surfactants are found within the formulation reduces the effectiveness delivery of chlorhexidine as an active form. Or the toothpaste should be used prior to using the chlorhexidine and excess toothpaste should be rinsed away with the water. Now coming to the adverse effect of chlorhexidine. Brownish staining of teeth on restoration which may be associated with the precipitation of melanoidins from the saliva. Second, loss of taste sensation can be seen. Third, hypersensitivity can be seen but in very rare cases. Fourth, stenosis of the parotid duct also reported in a very rare cases. Fifth, supragingival calculus formation because the dead bacteria due to the use of chlorhexidine may act as an initiator for supragingival calculus formation which is the base on the seeding mechanism of the calculus formation and supragingival calculus can be seen because of the precipitation of the slivery protein onto the tooth surface which increases the pellicle thickness. Sixth, oral mucosa erosion can also be seen by the use of the chlorhexidine. Now coming to the indications of the chlorhexidine use. First, in the oral hygiene phase of the periodontal treatment, it could be used as an adjunct to the mechanical oral hygiene. Second, secondary prevention following the oral surgical procedures. Third, to improve the oral hygiene and reduce the bacterial load in the saliva. Fourth, plaque control in the physically and mentally challenged individuals. Fifth, in medically compromised patients who are predisposed to the oral infections like oral candidiasis and denture stomatitis, chlorhexidine is very effective. Chlorhexidine appears to offer synergistic effect to fluoride in caries prevention. Seventh, in patients suffering from minor recurrent aphthous ulceration, it can be used in a patient undergoing removable and fixed orthodontic treatment. Chlorhexidine is very effective in the long-stay hospital patient, elderly patients and terminally ill patients. So, in today's lecture of chemical plaque control aids, I have covered about the chlorhexidine in detail. Next time, I will be covering about the other chemical plaque control agents. Till then, keep learning, keep growing. See you next time.